Hello, I'm Greg Beller. I work as an artist, a researcher, a teacher, and a computer designer for the contemporary arts. I have founded the Cinekin project where I invent new musical instruments combining sound and movement, which I use in improvisation situations with various performers or in a computer assisted composition, notably uh, in my opera, The Fault. At the Ligeti Center, while preparing a second doctorate on natural interfaces for computer music, I'm a research assistant in the Innovation Lab and I teach in the Multimedia Composition Department at Hamburg's HFMT, University for Music and Drama. At the Nexus of the Arts and Sciences at IRCAM in Paris, I was successfully a doctoral student working on generative models of expressivity and their application to speech and music, a computer music designer, director of the research creation interfaces department and product manager of the IRCAM forum. In this unit, you will discover some links between voice and gesture. You will use this natural proximity to create new intuitive musical instruments that allow you to manipulate sound with your hands. The structure of this unit will enable you to tackle, with increasing complexity, the notion of machine learning to model the temporal relationship between multimodal data. Various physical gesture sensors are introduced and compared libraries for gesture processing and machine learning are presented and their use are demonstrated in different artistic contexts for pedagogical purposes. The exercise enables you to make them your own and incorporate these tools into your artist studio. For the past 10 years, through residencies and artistic creations, the Sinekin project has invited performers to question the intimate relationship between vocal gestures and manual gestures through the manipulation of scenic devices based on new technologies. Metaphorically, the preeminent neuromotor link between voice and gesture is closed by creative prosthesis, joining the capture of movement to the transformation of the voice by artificial intelligence. Linking space and time through movement then transforms the search for sound into a scenic exploration. This unit provides a retrospective panorama of this experimental research in a narrative oscillating between theoretical questions, technological innovations and artistic productions. What is a gesture? A gesture is a form of communication in which bodily actions communicate particular messages. Manual gestures are most commonly broken down into four distinct categories. Symbolic, a hand wave used for hello. Deictic, a pointing finger showing this or that. Motor, accompanying the prosody of speech. Lexical, a gesture, for instance, that depicts the act of throwing, maybe said while saying, he threw the ball right into the window. Speech can be described as audible movements, a series of vocal gestures. By varying the positions of the trajectories of the lips, the jaw, the tongue, the velum and the glottis, a speaker creates variations in her pressure and airflow in the vocal tract. These variations in pressure and flow produce the acoustic signal that we hear when listening to speech. So, Stetson said once, speech is rather a set of movements made audible than a set of sounds produced by movements. 
Language is uh, still thought by some scholars to have evolved in Homo sapiens from an earlier system consisting of manual gestures. Indeed, gesture processing takes place in areas of the brain, such as Broca's and Wernicke's areas, which are used by speech and sign language. The faculty of speaking with the ants would not only result from cultural origins, but would also result from a deep neuronal relation connecting the speech to the gestures of the ants. There is ample evidence for the ubiquitous link between manual, motor and speech systems in infant development, in dictic pointing and in uh, repetitive tapping and speaking tasks. For example, I can break my speech into syllables without even thinking about it, simply by clapping my hand as I speak. I don't need any special training, simply because the motor control of my vocal apparatus is neurologically linked with the motor control of my hands. By analogy to synesthesia, a phenomenon by which two or more senses of perception are associated, the neologism synekinesia would reflect our ability to associate two or more motor senses. In the Synekin project, the natural link between voice and gesture is enhanced by creative prosthesis. A technology allows the transformation of the voice by capturing the gesture. Uh, the voice is conventionally captured by a microphone. And the positions and dynamics of the hands are informed by different motion capture sensors. Between the two, different computer programs based on artificial intelligence allow the direct manipulation of sound with the hands. The performer can record and arrange her or his voice in space, sample and play vocal percussion, and design a complete sound stage. This technology makes it possible to establish a link between voice and gesture, between sound and movement, between time and space. And linking space and time through movements then transforms the search for sound into a scenic exploration. So these instruments have been used to create performances and installations at the crossroads of theater, dance and music. During my thesis on generative models of expressivity and their applications for speech and music, an artificial intelligence algorithm based on a corpus of expressive sentences allowed me to generate an emotional speech by modulating the prosody of a neutral utterance. During the development of this synthesizer of the emotion in the voice, I felt several times the desire to control the prosody by the gesture. After all, gesture seems to naturally accompany speech, so why not the other way around? At the same time, another research team at IRCAM was developing one of the first instrumental gesture sensors, allowing the measurement of the dynamics of a bow by integrating small accelerometers and gyroscopes. The data related to movement is transmitted in real time by Wi-Fi to a computer which triggers sounds and modulates effects according to the dynamics of the gesture. To play IIO percussion, you will need a controller embedding dynamic sensors such as accelerometers or gyroscopes. Custom gloves accelerometers. So this is a little chip and you have here the battery and inside you have uh, accelerometers and gyroscopes and this is sending the data over the Wi-Fi to your computer. 
You can wear it inside some gloves or some here. This is like a tennis strip. Put it like this. And then after, when you move it, the data will be in real time sent to your computer. And then you can control whatever you want, lights, smoke machine, with this data. Other sensor you can use is this janky wave ring. This is quite like the same. This is a ring. You wear it like this. And you have here a display with some information and also you have some button, which is really convenient when you want to send events to uh, the computer from the stage, the stage, for instance. So you can start a recording or replay. Also, this ring is sending some uh, accelerometers and angle gyroscope data to your computer, this time using the Bluetooth. Riot accelerometers, Nintendo Wii controller, a janky wave ring, or your smart smartphone. Your smartphone, tablet, or smartwatch contains these sensors, and you can use them to trigger sounds. The easiest way to do this is to use the Como T app, available for Android or iOS, in conjunction with the Como T Max package. Once the data from your smartphone's accelerometers and gyroscopes has been received in your Max patch, it needs to be processed to transform it into sound triggering events. To do this, we use the Gestural Sound Toolkit. With this combo of an app and two packages, you can trigger sounds in Max from your smartphone. Build a Max patch that triggers vocal sounds with a smartphone using Komoti app, Komoti Max package, and the Gestural Sound Kit version 2. Actually, you can do much more, like controlling the cutoff frequency of a filter or the pitch of a speech sample with one of the three angles of the phone. In 2010, as part of the creation of Luna Park, a musical theater work by Georges Apergis, I integrated these sensors into gloves and developed a first instrument called Spoke Hands, which literally made it possible to uh, speak with the hands. Spoke Hands allows the triggering and modulation of voice samples by aerial percussion and hand elevation. Like a vocal theremin, Spoke Hands offers the performer the option of a three voice polyphony. In this case, the natural division of a conductor's brain is used, the left brain, right hand, for the segmental part, and the right brain, left hand, for expressivity. The percussive gestures of the right hand trigger preselected syllables, whose pitch and intensity are modulated by continuous gestures of the left hand. In Luna Park, a probabilistic segment text generation interface has been used. In this case, the mapping is direct between the detection of a movement pulse or kick 
and the triggering of a sound segment belonging to a buffer, which can be selected incrementally within the original sequence to preserve the text, for example, inversely or palindromically to the original sequence, probabilistically by randomly selecting the index of the segment to be played among all segments each time using the function random in max among segments not yet selected function earn in max among segments according to their probability of appearance east and proba in max the probability distribution used to draw the next segment can be manually edited. The initial distribution corresponds to the frequency histogram of each labeled segment within a buffer. In this case, we can speak of a probabilistic mapping paradigm. <sighs> Now that we can trigger speech sounds such as syllables, let's record and segment them in real time using a button, one of the Komoti app, for instance. In Babylon V2, a pair of button rings have been added to the sensor gloves, allowing for the picking and erasing of voice samples on the fly. Thus, spoke hands and the triggering of pre-made sounds evolved into hand sampling, in which the vocal flow is cut and recombined in percussive motor gestures. The hand sampling allows the performer to cut her or his voice in real time and recombine immediately through gesture. It involves percussive gestures that will segment and trickle vocal fragments. The length of these fragments can vary from syllable to sentence, and the order of the replayed segments can be sequential, random, or palindromic, which allows different playing modes. While accelerometric sensors are ideal for applications linked to dynamic motor gestures, as their response time is very fast on the order of milliseconds, they are unable to estimate static gestures and their position in space, and therefore to process symbolic or deictic gestures. This requires the addition of video sensors that can operate in the visible or infrared range. To the fast capture of the dynamics of the gesture by the accelerometer gloves, one can add the relatively slow capture of the absolute position of the hands in space. On some XR devices, is it possible to get fully articulated information about the user's hands when they are used as input sources? The WebXR hand input module expands the WebXR device API with the functionality to track articulated hand poses. This API exposes the poses of each of the user's hand skeleton joints. These can be used to do gesture detection or to render a hand model in VR scenarios. If you only have a webcam available, you can use a solution based on image processing and AI, such as uh, Node4Max hand pose. This will work for slow, continuous control movements. You can also have some camera-based sensors, like the Leap Motion, 
this is a small camera here that you can just put on a surface like that and it will actually try to get where is your end and to follow your fingers. So you see here, I'm able to draw with my finger in the air. So I can put the sound using these coordinates. On a wider range, you can use the Microsoft Kinect, which is a camera that is um, scanning the room and finding where are the skeletons of the performer. And so you know where are the joints of the bones and where are the ends into the space. So you have static coordinates of the position of the ends. This makes it possible to obtain, in addition to the fine temporal precision of the percussive type triggering, the continuous control of sound processes according to the posture and the spatial position of the hands. The most advanced hand tracking systems are now integrated into VR and XR headsets. Using Graham Wakefield's Max VR package, you can easily integrate static position, dynamic acceleration data from the controllers of a MetaQuest 2 or 3 headset and or use the hand tracking embedded algorithm. If you want to use or track more skeletons on stage in a wider range, then you will use the OptiTrack motion capture system. So if you want to track many performers on stage to make them interact with a computer program with the audio content or the visual or to control effects uh, on stage, uh, you can use a motion capture system such as the one developed by OptiTrack. So these are professional scalable system. You can use them in stadium for sports, following soccer games. You can use them for um, uh, in studio um, to create avatar and or 3D, um, uh, 3D effect in movies. And we are using them on stage to follow performers and to track objects. So these camera are infrared. Uh, th you install them all around the stage and then um, uh, performers are wearing little markers uh, or bodysuits. And um, when they come in, the machine detects where they are on stage and then you can take some actions, specialization uh, of the sound and or uh, control of whatever uh, musical process uh, using the bodies on stage. If you have like fast cameras, like the motion capture cameras in the OptiTrack system, up to 120 frames per second, you can use the position of your hands in skeleton tracking mode or those of rigid objects you hold in your hand. Hi guys, this is Greg and Jakob and Tom uh, in the uh, forum uh, for a MoCat workshop. Uh, today is the 5th of January uh, 2022. And uh, what you see here moving on the screen is my uh, left hand and my right hand and I have some rigid body attached like this and then I can, well, I can move, uh, I can do percussions like this, I can uh, shoot the end of somebody there and uh, my hands are tracked uh, uh, all over the stage. Then uh, I can have special objects uh, like this pen. This pen has been marked with, um, uh, with uh, tape, a special tape and uh, one can track it and um, use it for uh, adapting and or to uh, sticks to for a drummer to play and or just as a prop and a special 
what it is. Then you can also have a ball like this. So um, again, we put some caves in it, and if it's well tracked, sometimes it works, sometimes not. But we have to uh, work on this uh, ball uh, again. Anyway, so these are passive markers that are reflecting the light, so you see them even in the dark because uh, the cameras that are uh, set up like here, we have 15 cameras and hangers and two cameras at the back and when we move, uh, these are uh, reflecting uh, the uh, infrared light and they can be visible even in the dark. So there are some uh, markers with a battery where you can uh, use them to um, uh, turn off the red lights, uh, the infra uh, infrared lights on the, the camera and then uh, this will emit the infrared so uh, you won't see it in the dark uh, so it can be placed here and you won't see it but the camera uh, will do and finally, so these are all classic markers and then you have these active markers here so uh, that you see on the on the floor, and um, these markers are active. It means that they uh, they are uh, bound to a circuit that sends some uh, some message to the cameras, and so we are sure that to track any kind of um, of markers there, and also uh, to have a, a dedicated ID that is not moving so that you can really know which marker is where and even if it's uh, it disappearing here and coming back it will still have the same ID and still say hey uh, I'm uh, for instance the little uh, finger or I am the toe or I am the other thing. We also work with a bodysuit uh, made of these passive markers where you can scrub the track uh, skeleton. Skeleton? So, yeah, and this gives something like this that is moving. Okay, great. So, I hope you will uh, make fun with the mocap uh, in the forum. Bye bye. The body choir uses the hand position to control a choir effect and the hyperbole to control a granular synthesizer. In both cases, a physical mapping paradigm between effect parameters and hand position is based on the manipulation of a virtual ball whose diameter is defined by the distance between the hands. The body choir transforms a singer into a choir. This virtual choir accompanies the singer according to her or his gestures and the postures he or she adopts. Singing involves movement of the body. This movement is captured and used to magnify the singer's musical intentions. The posture of the body and the sung note modulate in real time the harmony, the number of voices, or the spatial density of the choir. Hyperball takes the form of a virtual sound ball, which the participant waters with the voice and modulates with the gesture. The position, the size and orientation of the ball influence the height, density and volume of the sound generated. This type of musical activity, by its constitution, causes choreographic movements.
in Max with Not for Max hand pose, create a voice processing effect, reverb, delay, or pitch shifting, the parameters of which are controlled by the position of the index finger. Between vocal gesture and hand gesture, different computer programs based on artificial intelligence allow the direct manipulation of sound by gesture by the learning of temporal relationships. Supervised machine learning algorithms are trained with label datasets and can perform two tasks regression and classification. Regression finds correlations between variables. If the variable is time, then regression can be used to follow a previously recorded gesture. On the other hand, classification is an algorithm that divides the dataset into classes. If several gestures have been recorded, modeled and labeled, Categorization enables recognition of a new gesture. Mubu for Max is a toolbox for multimodal analysis of sound and motion, interactive sound synthesis and machine learning. This is a Max package found in the Package Manager and on the EarCamp forum. It includes real-time and batch data processing, granular concatenative and additive synthesis, data visualization, static and temporal recognition, regression and classification algorithms, and a lot of other stuff. The Mubu multibuffer is a container providing a structured memory for the real-time processing. The buffers of a Mubu container associate aligned audio and motion captured data. Each track of a Mubu buffer represents a regularly sampled data stream or a sequence of time tag events such as audio samples, audio descriptors, motion capture data, markers, segments, and musical events. Okay, let's dive into the package to find the tools linked to tracking and gesture recognition. The mapping by demonstration approach involves an interaction loop that consists of two phases. A training phase that allows the user to define mappings and a performance phase in which the user controls sound synthesis through the previously defined mappings. The XMM part of the Mubu package is designed to make this interaction loop transparent to the user without requiring expert knowledge of machine learning algorithms and methods. In the following examples, the XMM for multimodal hierarchical hidden Markov model algorithm simultaneously enables gesture recognition and gesture following. Wired gestures dynamically links voice to gesture in an artificial way. The machine simultaneously records a voice gesture and a manual gesture. It learns the temporal relationship between the two. Then it reproduces the voice when the performer repeats the same gesture. The nuances of timing in the gesture are then heard as prosodic variations of the voice and it becomes possible to break down the expressivity. Yeah. 
Using motion data from the smartphone and the mubu.xmm object, create a patch to reproduce the wire gesture instrument. Just escape jointly records voice, gesture and video. Then new gestures will activate this memory. The performer animates the video by reproducing the same gesture or by repeating the same associated sound. Bienvenue ici. Bienvenue ici. Ici une Bienvenue ici. Bienvenue ici. Let's add your webcam in the mix and create a patch to reproduce the Jazz Escape instrument. While motion data can be derived from hand tracking, it is also possible to track speech gestures by modeling them with MFCCs, male frequency capstrom coefficient. In this way, we can track and recognize vocal gestures, speech or singings, vowels or syllables, without using gesture data. Create a patch. Record three syllables, ba, mo and t, for instance, and use the mubu.xmm object to recognize and follow them based on their MFCC description only. In this unit, you have used the links between voice and gesture to create new intuitive musical instruments that allow you to manipulate sound with your hands. These instruments have enabled you to tackle with increasing complexity the notion of machine learning. The exercises enable you to make them your own and incorporate them into your artist studio now it is your turn to create with these tools and make them even better. Create a patch! <laughs> <laughs>